So this here is the Rockkey VS Vibration Sensor and we're going to take a look at it today and put it to the test on this common rail diesel engine. So it's basically an oscilloscope accessory like a piezo vibration sensor that we can actually screw down onto fuel pipes and you can use it for common rail diesel also the direct injection petrol engines where you've got the high pressure fuel injection and the metal pipes. Um, they say that you can also use it on other pipes and hoses as well. I did give it a go on a rubber hose and it probably wasn't as good as what I might have thought. So I need to do a bit of testing on that, but plastic pipes as well, apparently. Okay, so you can see we've got it connected up to the oscilloscope at the minute. And if we give it a tap, we can see there that it's picking up the vibrations through there. So let's connect it up, start the engine and see what we get. Okay, so we can see we've already got one connected up here on cylinder four, and we've just screwed it down onto the fuel pipe going to that injector. I've also got a voltage measurement for the cylinder four there. I'll talk about that in a minute. And we've also got an amp clamp around cylinder one. What we'll also do is disconnect one of the injectors, put the dummy injector in and see how it picks up the issue. So we'll put this over on cylinder one. Okay, so cylinder one is now in there. And what we'll do is compare the two. Okay, so in green, we've got the current for injector one. And in blue, we've got the uh, voltage on injector four. And you can see that we've actually got a voltage event for injector one. That's because that they share a power supply inside the control module. Doesn't show you that on the wiring diagram, but that's how they work on these uh, engines. Um, let's just reduce the time base and put a trigger on channel C for the injector current. Okay. Let's just make that voltage a little bit smaller. Let's reduce the time and just look at what we've got in a little bit more detail. Okay, so we can see the injector activation here and we can see that the vibration sensor is actually picking up the pulses in that fuel pipe for that injector. Because if we just zoom back out again, we can see that we've got a strong pulse on the cylinder four where we've got the voltage measurement okay so this is cylinder one and this is cylinder four where we're only measuring the voltage so what we want to do is see if it can pick up the mechanical failure of one of the injectors what we would be looking for is no signal from that vibration sensor the benefit of having two is that you can compare it to a known good which we've got here cylinder four and cylinder one. I'm gonna save this waveform so you can go and pick it up from the free access area on mechanicmindset.com. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is disconnect injector one and we're gonna fit a dummy injector. This will just make sure that what we're picking up on the sensor isn't interference because as a normal scenario, that injector will still be working but it will not be opening in the fuel system. So there we go. We're still measuring the current of the dummy injector. We've still got the vibration sensor on cylinder one and cylinder four, and we're measuring the voltage as well. Okay, so the engine's misfiring. Let's just start that oscilloscope again. So yeah, if we look at that, we can clearly see we're still getting the pulse for injector four. And injector one now, we aren't getting anything. So that works really, really well. Clearly gets a much stronger signal from the um, injector pipe that it's put on. So let's put one of them onto the fuel rail now and see if we can see all four in one go. Okay, so I'm gonna take it off cylinder four, the vibration sensor. I'm gonna leave the one on cylinder one because I'll plug the injector back in and we'll do the same again and see what this one looks like here. So you can see now that we've put that vibration sensor on the inlet to the rail, and we've got the output coming from that high pressure pump here, and there's that inlet. 
We've left cylinder four on there and I'll just connect this back up so we're all good again. Okay, so channel B, the red one, is now on that rail. And you can see there that we are getting some pick up here, although we could potentially be picking up something else, possibly from the pump, uh, as this one here is on cylinder one. Okay, so we're still getting our strong signal from cylinder one. However, if you look at the rail, we are getting a signal, but it's just not as strong, okay? So if we line that up there, we can see, yeah, we're getting like a small signal next to cylinder one. And again, we're getting a smallish kind of signal next to cylinder four, but there's also something straight after it, okay? So if we go ahead and disconnect cylinder four this time, we want to be focusing on this part here between these rulers here. Okay, so we can see that there's something going on, but if we just disconnect that now. Okay, yeah, so we've definitely lost that signal there. So yeah, if you saw there, we definitely lost that pulse on the uh, common rail vibration sensor. So really quite a sensitive tool and one that's definitely worth having in your toolbox.